<laughs> Welcome once again to Brain Candy Podcast. I am Susie Meister. I am here with Sarah Rose. That's me. Hi, Sarah. Hey, that was really good. We didn't even practice that or anything. And I don't <laughs> even know how I know that song. What is that? No, what song is that from? What even? is that? It's just da, like da, da, the generic da, da, game show da, da. It's theme be like, song. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so. Is watch it like it's from the dating like Saturday game, maybe? Live. It does sound like the dating game. Well, no, maybe the newlywed game is what I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. Classic game show moments. I. You know what Classic. I want them to bring back from those old timey game shows is you know that long, weird, skinny microphone my, oh, like they used yes. to use on yes. the Price is Right and stuff. Where'd Seuss, that thing go? It is so funny that you mentioned that because uh, when I was watching the uh, documentary about the <sighs> Golden State Killer, yeah. um, uh, one of the things I was thinking when they were showing archival footage of like the interviews of like the, I don't know, newscasters from like the oh, 70s yeah, and yeah, 80s yeah. was, yeah. man, that's a cool ass microphone. And it wasn't the long one from like the, the game shows. It was just another one that the news reports were using. Yeah. And I'm like, how did we get, microphones got worse. They look less <laughs> Yeah, cool. they got uglier. Yeah, they got uglier. So we need to go back because those ones were like sleek and cool. Yeah. Right. And For like real. how big of a difference could it really be in terms of audio quality? Come on. Right. Is this like a, the bigger the microphone, like something right. thing. but like so, the long skinny <laughs> one looked too like dainty and so they had to make one like a <laughs> really probably thick talk. blame the patriarchy I, they're pro- probably everything. behind it I, everything is either the patriarchy or racism and sometimes it's one <laughs> and the same oh that reminds me one of our first orders of business we have to talk about mm. is how you were accidentally racist when oh when you- oh yes when i talked about trader joe's and now that they're Who taking knew? trader joe's off the shelf I yes, get it. Let's recap. What I do was- get it. Okay. Mm. So a few episodes ago, you were remarking that at Trader Joe's, they I have do. these international lines yeah. of various products. And it's so yeah. cute how they'll be like Trader Jose's or yeah. I don't know what the other yeah. ones are. Trader Jotto. And- <laughs> I love that one. Because that's how we and said it. You think it's adorable. I do. But evidently, some people found it offensive. You know, and it's it's interesting because uh, when uh, there were other ones, I think it was like Trader Ming's, and I was like, mm, that doesn't sound good because <laughs> That's like too far. I don't know if if, if unless Ming translates into John or Joe's in, yeah, but I yeah, don't yeah. think it does. And so then I was like, oh, and it's kind of like the same. There was an, a hilarious episode of Broad City where. Um, Oh, one of the gals was like doing accents and and like doing Australian accent and then doing a German accent and then doing a, a an Italian accent and then she's like okay okay now do it Chin- now do it, it in Chinese and she goes no man that's racist <laughs> and it's right. like it's weird that there's it's it's not weird it's it's a, a, a representative of how race is a social construct that there mm-hmm. is a line and the line changes all the time. So really we should just not do any of that. And I do get that, but I think Trader yeah. Jotos is adorable. I'm still going <laughs> to stand by that. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it is one of those subtle things that, you know, you have to really be in tune with it to pick yes. up on it maybe. Yeah. Um, which is why we didn't, you know, we're just white blonde ladies. What the hell yep. do we know? What the hell do we know? So as soon as we are alerted, yeah. That this is offensive, then the end. But yeah. I did not know that it was. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I don't know I why. Know. It's like, and then I think for some reason, maybe it's just because I spent a lot of time in Italy and my mom, <laughs> like, I don't know. She, I mean, she speaks fluent Italian. We, we would go to school, to Italian schools, like one month out of the year for, mm-hmm. it's, and so uh, people making fun of it, not making fun, but just like having a little poke or making like, making a joke yeah, there's about like a the fine Italian line ones. between right. like a caricature versus a stereotype versus yeah. racism. And, and like, I always careful. make a joke every single time I see that this is going to sound terrible too. So get ready for me to be accidentally, but uh. not even accidentally <laughs> towards like Italians. Italians are going to hate this, but that, listen, I like know so much about the culture. It's ridiculous. And so, uh, uh, every single time I see the restaurant Bucati Beppo, 
I yes. think of somebody doing a, 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 a like a joke of an Italian accent of somebody going "babbidi boopy," and so I think it's the most ridiculous name for an Italian restaurant, "bucchi pepo," "babbidi boopy." It's like that seems like more of a mockery of Italian like culture. Well, so maybe there you they'll go. go out of business next week, <laughs> and then we can talk about it. Oh, it just makes me laugh every time. "Bucchi pepo," "babbidi boopy." <laughs> I'm sure that the intention of those international lines and the names that were attributed to them was uh, innocent. Yeah. But that's what accidental racism is. So yeah. and I'm glad they're, you know, taking yeah. on board what mm-hmm. someone mm-hmm. complained about and making yes. a change. Yes. And I, too, will make a change in, I don't what know. What are you going to do? Uh, I don't know. What do I need to do in this situation? I guess I still just think, maybe yeah. be more aware. I'll be more aware. When you're shopping? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's down for that. I don't know. Yeah. But, I, you know, people kept emailing us, so I had to uh, I will. It. I will happily stop buying the Trader Joe's brand and start buying the really good, legit Italian brand of crushed tomatoes because, like, that's worth it. Hell, yeah. yeah. That, that that's makes like a win-win. I, right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay, there we go. Oh, another order of business is we mm-hmm. keep getting um, emails inquiring about your new, um, I would call it a verbal affectation. Where what? you do like, you, <laughs> I love you. You do this thing now, which I noticed, but I didn't think anyone else would, where you, when you are kind of racking your brain about something, you go, uh, uh, uh. Do you know that you do that? Oh. But it's new. It's, it's, it's not a thing you've always done. Well, I'll tell you, it's because it's probably something Ren does. Oh. For sure. Because he always say, uh, he always says, oh my gosh, what is it? He says, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no, he goes, what's it called? Or I think it's like something like that. It's like, what's it called? What's it? But when he's thinking, it's like a filler. Yes. And I've adopted yeah. that. I can't help it. Yeah, it's probably that. Well, and I was I'll thinking about how women in particular often use verbal tics and pauses and filler to avoid interruption because oh, we're sure. so frequently interrupted by everyone. So maybe yeah. you've developed that in response to that as well. Although I Ooh. probably don't interrupt you as much as other no, people No, you might. definitely don't. And, and I would say not many people interrupt me. I am the interrupter. <laughs> <laughs> well, for anyway. sure, 100%. I, think I that's like a good apologize theory, for that on the regs. If I'm medicated, I don't interrupt as much. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's ADD. It's funny though how that occurs where you're you're a fully grown, mature woman, but you yeah. can still be influenced by people that you're around oh, and develop absolutely. these like affectations. We all do that. It's so weird. You know what? If I watch, if I binge watch a television show, then whatever character I am, I don't know, identifying or, or liking that week. I will, Mm -hmm. my internal monologue will be in the affect of that character. Yeah. I can see that. And weird ones too. Like cartoons. Maybe it's a sign of empathy. For sure. I'm sure it's something Mm -hmm. like that. I think we've talked about this before. The one who picked up, there's a name for that. Uh, It's like something, I can't remember, but anywho. Anywho, we do it. We all do yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with that. But I am going to be aware because I don't like use. I feel like sometimes the uh, 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 they take away from, um, now I'm trying not to do it. I know. <laughs> from the, the subject. So really I should just slow down. Oh, yeah. Okay. But well, like, it's not oh, a criticism. Well. People were just well, oh, curious. No, I, 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 I do not take it as one. I like all those kind of things. Um, one, another thing that we definitely like is using stamps.com to Love it. for all of our shipping needs. Um, I'm sure you guys are in the same boat as us where you don't want to leave your house very much right now. And any kind of elimination of leaving the premises is helpful. Mm. And yeah. stamps is a great way to accomplish that and still get crap where it's got to go. Or maybe your mom is trying to get residency in another country and she has to mail 5,000 things to your house and you're happy to help her, but you are <laughs> even more happy and excited that stamps.com is there so you don't have to go to the post office a billion times. But I don't know, maybe you could relate. Just hypothetically. Just like hypothetically. <laughs> 
Right, because, I mean, that happens to both of us where our parents are like, hey, can you send me the... I mean, that's constant. I'm right. constantly shipping stuff to my mother. Um, but you can print out any class of mail, any um, amount for any kind of package, right from your desk or your house, um, and you just put it on the package and leave it for your mail carrier. Plus, it's a discount, too. You get $0.05 mm-hmm. cents off every stamp and sixty-two up to 62% off USPS and UPS shipping rates. So you save time and money. So you're getting convenience, but you're also um, keeping money in your wallet. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. Even that is helpful without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Brain Candy. That's Stamps.com and enter Brain Candy. Okay. Yeah, man. First of all, I found this really fun <laughs> Uh, thing that they're doing in Iceland Mm. to there's a new app that lets you de-stress because presumably Mm -hmm. most people are under a great deal of stress right now because of the way things are going. Yes. Um, And you can scream and they (gasps) will and record it and they will um, put it into the Icelandic void. Ah. Like they have speakers in Iceland. Oh my gosh. You could scream into the abyss. (laughs) broadcast whatever you scream and they even give you tips on you know how to scream effectively oh. and it, it encourages you also if you're truly in trouble to seek help if you need more than of just course. a little release um it's called looks like you need iceland.com <laughs> and it's hilarious i mean that's do you get to like people. hear people scream yeah i think you can listen as well because the speakers there put them out and then i think that you can listen online it's but how like, funny but, where, is that? but where are you going to go record the scream? Into your phone. Yeah, but like, like where house. are you going? Out your house. I live in a very crowded apartment. <laughs> I see this as being a potential uh, 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 attractor uh, uh, of attention. Uh, uh. Oh my God, I did it. Ah! <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm totally not aware of that. Really? That's funny. Yeah, I totally Even didn't know. Even when you listen to the episodes? You're like, I don't listen, Sue. <laughs> Maybe I'm just like, I don't even think about it. I love I'm going to have to. It's such oh a gosh. cute little quirk. Wow. Now I only want to do that. This happened before <laughs> with something else I said. What? There, I can't remember what it was, but this happened when we first started recording and people said, oh, you know, you say that a lot. No. And then I became aware of it and then I stopped doing it. So maybe this will work this time. <laughs> yeah maybe you okay. could scream it into the icelandic void uh-huh. and then it'll be done yeah but i'm just saying like this that wouldn't I, you have to initially record the scream and I, it screaming does say real you loud don't... would kind of draw a little bit of attention <laughs> it does say that you of course do not have to scream you can record whatever you want and they will broadcast it uh, and it is free i believe they're just promoting tourism to iceland i love um, a good scream into the void yeah like it's oh very man. healthy for real that mm-hmm. that when i was out in the woods that i wanted so bad to just be like just scream i don't know no, why that would be fun yeah but then it's like oh, somebody's gonna come around and if you do that at a campsite well hopefully but babies maybe do it wouldn't. all the time <laughs> babies do that's true those assholes yeah and mm-hmm. you know i always think like what what did Kids do to relieve, like relieve stress and make themselves oh, yeah, feel they better. Let it out. We should do all those things because that works. But that's a really good really, point, right? Like that they know what they need inherently, yeah. and then just address it. Whereas we're taught to stifle all of that, yes, repress, yeah. resist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Well, if anyone's feeling need, they can use that. I'm into it. Um, I did also read a hilarious. Um, it wasn't even meant to be hilarious, actually. I think it was in the Atlantic or something. It was about how many hot dogs oh. can a human possibly eat in 10 minutes? Because you know how there's always these uh-huh. you know, hot dog eating contests, right. and it's unbelievable what they I can know. do. But they wanted to know, what is the upper limit? Um, and so Ugh. scientists tested it and determined that the... Well, the current record is 75 in 10 minutes. Oh, Jesus Christ. By uh, Joey Chestnut, I think it is. Oh, good old Joey Chestnut. I mean, he is like the goat of... Oh, God. Anyway, but the answer is 
84. So there's Ooh, still room we for are, him to improve. See, look at you with your positive attitude. I'm like, uh-oh, we are inching way too close to D-E-A-T-H. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> D-E-A-T-H. Well, I don't even think that the limit is imposed based upon what is fatal. It's just what is humanly possible to chew up and swallow in 10 minutes. Oh. Yeah. But, like, I'm sh- <sighs> I don't know. I feel like somebody's going to do... All this does is is set the bar. <laughs> I know. Encourages all, more bad uh, yes. behavior. This is terrible. Are, are you anti-food eating contest? Absolutely. <laughs> I didn't know that. Why? Because I don't think it's good for the... I'm anti any kind of extreme... Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Oh my gosh, I'm doing it. <laughs> that is me thinking. And you know what's funny is when I do it, I looked I look I look around like with each with each uh I like turn I my head. Love uh, this. uh 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 <laughs> Because I have to think, what do you want to sit there and silence people? We can do that. <laughs> Let's play that game. And now I have to like think and fill the right, we're gonna dead have a lot air. of dead air. We're gonna have so much, and I have to talk real. So I have to talk and think at the same time. No, it's I don't a remember lot. What we're talking about? Oh yeah, well, why I think dogs. that would kill you? <laughs> yeah, or not even kill you. But you know how? I also think. Uh, uh, my God, I hate it's everybody. Okay. Just let it go. It's fine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I also think that that show. But what's the one where they lose all the weight? Oh, yeah, Biggest Loser. Yes, I think that's terrible. I think any kind of extreme yeah. pressure on the body and swing in any direction or, or pr- like, effect on the met- met- metabolism. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's – t- t- I think we all agree it's not a healthy thing and what, to do. Wh- here's how I know. Okay. Because I participated in many right. a eating contest on the challenge. And tell I know how my body consumed. felt. Oh my gosh. And let me tell you, I am good at this game. <laughs> if I wanted to, I could go pro. I will say that confidently. <laughs> I'm not Sarah, kidding. I have, I I'm not kidding. You. And here's and and here's why. And here's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. First of all, it's actually quite dangerous, but I don't have any tonsils. So yes, right. The, it is a clear runway, which helps <laughs> with any sort of speed swallowing. Uh, this sounds so weird. Please do not take any of this out of context. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, voracious appetite that always helps. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you love former food, binge yeah. eater, love mm-hmm. food, <laughs> and binge eater. Yeah, and I, I just. And I could definitely like zone out and just eat food. Like, yeah, you do have down. the skill set. You're F- right. Totally have the skill set. <laughs> and uh, you could and be a champion. I could. I know. But I, I also know what's good for me, and it's not eating contests. Wow. And this when is so I, healthy. when when we did the challenge where it was Battle of the Seasons, and we were playing this game where TJ would bring out a plate of food. Okay. And we would, our team would have to bid. We would say, I think that we can oh, eat yeah. like, you know, this much in this amount of time. And the other team would say, uh, I can do this much. Or they'd say like, okay, do it. And if you can't, then you, the other team gets the point. If you can, you get the point and vice versa. And th- it, we happen to be in Turkey, which is Mediterranean food and Susie. Right. This is my favorite. Favorite. Mm-hmm. Favorite food. So we, our team got... Uh, and it was so great because it got it kind of went from you never knew what they were bringing out, but yeah. they started with all the good stuff, and then they got you know worse as it went on. We ended up eating liver, I think, at the very end. But, oh no! But uh, the the first one our team did was one of my top five favorite foods, which is stuffed grape leaves. Yes. Oh my gosh, do yeah. I love these? So you can I'm like trying to those. downplay how much excited I am for this. I'm like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I like. I bet we can eat. Like, be casual. You know, what a super cash. They called us, and I think we ended up saying <laughs> like fifty, and they said, "Okay, do it." No, our team of four, yeah, ate sixty-two something around there single-handedly. I ate almost half of them. No. Yeah, 
It was like no problem. No problem. I think I ate like thirty-two or something crazy Holy like that. Holy heck! Or twenty-eight. It was something where I ate, where the people who were watching, like the crew, <laughs> they were looking, and one guy was like, "I, I'm like horrified." Yeah. At you. <laughs> He's like, "I like." kind of turned on but also mostly right. horrified yeah right like how and, and i you know just like shoving him and swallowing it whole afterwards because the worst part was that we had to then wait that was round number one and then we oh had to God. wait for other teams to go so if this were right. my choice mm-hmm. i'd do what you and i did in the ruins and like you know up chuck everything that you you just swallowed did yeah did you do that I probably did. Yeah, because wh- oh, you have to. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't able to do that because we were, like, on set, hot set, whole time. <laughs> and so I had to just leave it in my stomach. And then when I tried, oh, it was the worst to try to throw up. Nobody should eat that many uh, uh, stuffed gra- dolmas, stuffed grape leaves. Nobody should eat that many. Uh, it, it shouldn't fit it in my stomach, and it didn't. And I was <laughs> stuffed up for, like, four days. <gasps> Well, it, that actually was in the article about how that's actually much worse than the uh, uh, contest itself. Oh. Is your body trying to digest all of it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. No, not good. So there, yeah. that's why I do not. I just don't think you should put the body through anything like that. Right. And I know people like train for it and everything, but like, I don't know. Yeah, because they said... in their testing, it really wasn't about what the stomach could hold because for a normal person, there are more limits. But as you said, these people train Mm -hmm. so that their stomachs are more stretchable and malleable or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so the real issue is just the logistics of how fast you can chew and swallow. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) You're welcome, everyone. Yeah. (laughs) So the answer is 84 for all of you that Oh, gosh. Yeah. So now they've just set the... The number for that. Yeah. Who I wonder? Would, like, what do you think the sort of psychological makeup is of a person who really wants to do that? Mm. Competitively. Yeah, I think the 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 joy that comes the the like I don't know good feelings that dopamine hit from the praise that you get and the oh, crowd praise. Like, the the. Yeah, kind of like the attention. I bet these mm-hmm. that this is a very I don't know, it's something that gets applauded and something where pe- people who win these eating contests, people know their name. Mm-hmm. They get a lot of attention Do for it. Do you think it, it tends to be like failed athletes who they can't really be athletes, so this is a way for them to be competitive? <laughs> mm, I don't know. I don't know. I f- it's it's interesting. I would want to because I think it's the same kind of people who get obsessive about anything when you're up at that certain mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. So there, I just think it, it falls into the category of people who uh, become fixated on stuff. Oh, okay. Whatever it is, because I watched I've watched documentaries on uh, like competitive rock climbing and like the indoor rock climbing. That's more about how fast you can get up than like. Yeah, you know, connecting to nature and being one with the rock and all that stuff. They're just mm-hmm. like, let's see how fast we can do it, and which is cool and badass. So it's, I love it. But and then they the just Scrabble, have tunnel vision for that. Yeah, one thing. and yeah. like the Scrabble documentaries or the whatever it is where it's competitive and and like niche and also not physical. Mm-hmm. Where it, I do think that that's something that it's just a fixated mind or people who enjoy that you know yeah i don't get it uh-huh i would love someone to do a study just on their brains yeah another thing that i love is having healthy hair which Ooh, is why yes I love function of beauty i oh, personalized uh, i love it i've been using them for years and the reason mm-hmm. was because i remember when i moved out here and mm-hmm. i don't know if it's the water or mm-hmm. What? But my hair broke off. Yep. I could have finished that sentence for you. I remember that. <laughs> it was terrible because it was mm-hmm. so long. And then I had to cut it really short. And that's when I started curling it all the time. And I was like determined 
to get healthy hair back. And so I got Function of Beauty because you can customize it to whatever the heck your problems yep. are. And so I chose all of the things in the quiz. It was like moisture, uh, pre- prevent breakage, all the damage, all that stuff. Because, I mean, when you mm-hmm. pour bleach on your hair every month, things happen. And you got the good kind with the purple tint, so it keeps your hair from looking brassy. Exactly. Yeah, they have that for people that use color so that your hair stays nice the way you like it. But it's formulated specifically for you, whether you have curly hair, fine hair, whatever. And um, you can tell them, like, I don't want silicone in here or I don't want any fragrance. Like, you can make it really personal. They don't use sulfates or parabens or any of those harmful ingredients. And it's just a custom hair brand, just perfect for you. So what are you waiting for? Go to functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy to take their four-part hair profile quiz. It just takes a couple minutes and save 20% on your first order. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy for 20% off and let them know you heard about it from our show, please. That's yeah, functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy. And anybody that uses our codes and stuff, I just thank you so much because that's how we keep the lights on. That's how we keep the show going. And so we're so thankful when you use our codes. And it's good stuff. Oh, well, yeah. That's... We do not steer you around. <laughs> we don't. We really don't. Okay. Okay, would you like to hear mm-hmm. the history of the Walkman? <gasps> oh, my gosh. This is so funny. Yes, absolutely. Especially because was it, were we having the conversation about Walkman like it's a, like it's a name instead of Walkman? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, this is so funny. I know. Actually, I think it was us. I feel like this was in a, a, an episode. <laughs> it should be. It it's sounds hilarious. like something we it would talk totally about. It totally is because, like, I think I called it a Walkman, and you were like, Walkman? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> right. And you're like, it's Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, funny. It's that's like on Friends funny. when Phoebe was like, why isn't he Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like that. Or when you thought Red Man was Redman. I was like, no, Susie, Red Man. So embarrassing. Right. This is the Walkman, and the Walkman just uh, celebrated its 40th anniversary. Wow. Uh, we're the same age, and... It was really fun reading. This was in the New Yorker. Um, just sort of how it came to be. And I thought it was funny because so they, they created this thing in Japan. I believe it was Sony. And um, at first it was sort of stubbornly big. You know, it was too big to put in your pocket. So they had to have like, you remember how it had like a strap? Yeah. you would like wear, you know, like a purse almost. Yeah. And at first they had included on it this microphone, which... They put on there because they they feared that people would feel too isolated and would want to pause the music and then let whoever talk to them through a microphone. Like if your wife was like, hey, can I talk to you? You'd <laughs> hand her the microphone. And little did they know that the isolation was the whole beauty yep, of it. that's the point. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Can you believe that? That that's like something you don't even know Right. How much is the, the, you, the appeal? Yes, until you mm-hmm. have it. And then you're like, Wait, ooh, that's so interesting. Well, and they started calling it the Walkman effect. Um, and it's almost like a precursor to, you know, the phones mm-hmm. and then the headphones that we use now. And it sort of is a do not disturb sign. I mean, for yeah. people that are paying attention, Absolutely. some people ignore it. But, um, and it limits like the cacophony of sort of urban noise and, you know, if you're on the subway or walking around town. Mm-hmm. Um, and I loved hearing that like in the beginning, Warhol, Andy Warhol saw it as like a fashion statement, which is so Andy Warhol. Yeah. And then I didn't know this, that Paul Simon wore his at the Grammys in like 1982. Cool. Like, can you imagine and uh, I'm sure at the time it was like, what is this yeah. super high tech thing? But oh my gosh, that's so interesting because it really like, is the very first. Cu- well, was there any other kind of portable? I mean, those eight, those travel tape player. Well, that yeah. was the walk. The Walkman really was, but nothing with headphones. Nothing and like it was that. saying that like before the Walkman. Um, 
the headphones were really a sign of hearing impairment. Oh. Um, you know, so there was a context there that I didn't know because I'm just used to right. this. But before that, so it was So interesting. Of like, yeah. Um, and then it's funny because they were describing how the, the creator gave one to Steve Jobs in the early 80s before Steve Jobs was like Steve Jobs. Uh-huh. And he took it home and he dismantled it to see how they did it. And he was so envious. Like he didn't really want to be uh-huh. Microsoft or IBM. He wanted to be Sony. And how funny that is because he ended up creating the iPod. Oh, my gosh. I ab- I can imagine he was inspired by that right there. He's yeah. like, oh, now I see how to do it. Oh, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. And, I mean, do, do, do people ever use them anymore? Is that even a thing? Um. Well, obviously not a tape one, but I did use one when I was on the real world because I wasn't allowed, we weren't allowed to have any phones that had um, any sort of, like we couldn't have a A phone. A smartphone. Yeah. And how else do you use music? And then they wouldn't even let me have anything that had like Wi-Fi connection or anything like that. Wait a minute. Can you tell me more about all that? Oh, and I know why. I had an iPod and it was stolen. That's right. I was in. I was at a bank in Brooklyn. Stolen right there off the counter at the bank. No. <sighs> yeah. And then I told. I went and told the bank, and I was like, "Oh my God! Somebody just like be, you know why? This is a whole story. I, now you're gonna have to hear Tell it. Me. Buckle up. So <laughs> I'm left-handed, and they yeah. put all of the keypads and everything that you have to sign on the right-hand side. So I put my mm. eye. And uh, first of all, I know I shouldn't have had it out on the counter. So yes, it is my fault. But I put my iPad or my, uh, uh, it was like a first generation, you know, um, iPod and I put that out, put that on the counter and like just right in front of me. And then I lean over to sign and, uh, uh, like across the counter to sign this little, you know, pad, signature pad. And as I turn, somebody just yanked it and ran out the door with it. And it's at a bank where they were all recorded. Right. So then I turn around. I'm like, what the hell? It was just stolen. And right. I think that my headphones were like on or something. So I like felt it. And then the guy runs out the door. They're not able to get him. But they're able to look at his last transaction. Because he right. just did. Think. They found out that he was making a whole bunch of like cashing fraudulent checks. No. that Because they were like something was like that guy. How come he just did that? And so they looked into like the checks and there was like suspicious activity on oh the account God. or something like that. So what did you call it's, the police? Not over my iPod. And plus I was hmm. it, I was taking a break or I probably was like, you know, in doing something I would like told the producers I was one place and wasn't so mm. and I didn't call the police because I didn't have a freaking phone that's probably <laughs> why there you go I'm like there's I'm putting the story together because I'm like why didn't I I know and, I have to do that a lot too especially like, with show just, stuff oh, yeah with shows because I'm like that mm-hmm. seems weird and so that was it and I didn't have the money because they pay us absolutely nothing to yep. uh buy a new ipod while i was out there so i just bought a walkman and then i went to the goodwill and bought cds and i bought salt and pepper oh my god and i bought uh the soundtrack to get shorty oh my god Uh uh-huh and i bought uh the uh a cd by this band called orgy come on yes Sarah, what? Did, so you had this CD man. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what yes. they were called. Yeah. And you had his three CDs. Listen, it was Slim Pickens over there at the Goodwill I, in Brooklyn. I know. You're so thrifty. Well, yeah. I mean, I had to do, get music somehow. And then they don't even like... And, the, and I wasn't going to spend a whole bunch of money buying CDs that like... So I'm like, okay, what few things can I listen to? Yeah, I feel well, like so there was more than though, that. I might be able to look through my collection. I feel like there was definitely more than that. And I'm trying to remember what it was because I remember being like, yeah, this is pretty solid. This is like, this covers all the genres that I'm interested in listening to. But wait, what? can you explain a little more yeah, about yes, like the limitations yes. on what you are allowed to have and what you were not allowed to have? Well, you're not allowed to have a phone. Okay, and you're no not phone allowed, at all. Yeah, no phone. They oh. give you this phone that's like one of those Firefly phones that has a the picture of mom and picture of dad on it. And it was like, oh my call God. the producer or call the, uh, uh, oh, what's his name? 
whatever uh, Jim Johnston was, like the executive producer oh or the like line producer or talent That's coordinator. It. That's it. Maybe it could call nine one one. Maybe it had an emergency button. I don't remember that. Oh my god! But I definitely remember being like way too poor to buy an iPod and being like, oh, "Were god you damn allowed it. to?" Let's see. You had a computer in the house. Yeah. Oh, right? but this is great. The only way it worked was if somebody rode a bicycle. It was god, powered so by. Well, you had to do that while you were using it. Yeah, but then <laughs> this is the best. Then uh, uh, Caitlin is so in, he, she's such a genius. She was a computer hacker, like yeah. amazing. She cha- like went in, changed a whole bunch of settings, like rewired shit, and made it so we didn't have to do that anymore. She was like, "Yeah, that's stupid. I'll fix that." And, and then they like, didn't. That was okay. And it was. She was like, "I'm going to keep doing that, just so you know." Because yeah. she's like, this is ridiculous. And it was ridiculous because a lot of us, the whole, the whole idea of our season was we were like activists who were building our personal brand and out there uh, like, I don't yeah, know. working. Working. It was all right. about us doing our own individual jobs. We didn't even have a shared job together. And right. so like Scott was building his online business and his workout, you know. Right, yeah. Whole thing. And so we needed a computer. And they were, and I was doing research on all this stuff. So it was annoying. And she's like, yeah, it's, we're going to It's fix annoying this. to me because dumb. it's clearly a gimmick so that they can get, it's a funny plot point. But then yeah. once you get your footage, can we just be normal? Right. Like for real. For real. You're going to make people live like, I'm like, I must be in a mood about the show today. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Well, and well, then they got you. rid of it because I think they also realized that like, okay, these guys aren't going to want to do this. And it would, the, it would, like, give us, like, 20 minutes. It was so stupid. Do the rules sort of lighten up over the course of shooting? Or is it strict all the time? Uh, I think more, like, we... Well, I'm the wrong person to ask because <laughs> I am the rule follower. Mm-hmm. and Which I explored recently in my mind. And yeah. it's not necessarily that I have a fear of authority figures or, like, you know, judgment or what other people think about me. It's the... I'm scared of consequences i'm scared Hmm. of what could possibly happen and i think that comes from inconsistent consequences when i was a kid (laughs) right right so i like never know if something is the biggest deal or not a big deal at all and so i'm just terrified oh my god what how in trouble can i get for this and so like i don't want to get in trouble because i don't want any consequences Maybe. I just, you know, when you're uh, yeah, in you're quarantine, you do a lot of, just workshopping in my mind. <laughs> I know, it's so true. You do a lot of self-exploration. There's I was just thinking that. I was thinking, Adam must be so sick of hearing me try to <laughs> analyze myself. Because <laughs> it is sort of annoying, like, when someone oh does God, it around you all the time. I, know. Call, <laughs> I am like, this is what I live for, Sue. This is my bread and butter, literally. There is no way that you actually want to hear that, though. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I lo- the, Sue's. What do you think I did all through grad school? What? That. Listen Wait. to people do workshop self-exploration and explore. Yeah. This is what being a therapist is. Yeah, that's why I wouldn't think you'd want to do it as leisure. No, but it's different. <clears throat> it's like it, it's like a chef hanging out and, um, you know, making a good meal with friends. Yeah. Or having... Like calling up your chef friend and being like, hey, I'm having a dinner party. Can you come over and cook for me? That's not what you're doing. You're not asking for free service. You're just yeah. like, we would be like shooting the shit about a yeah. topic that I happen to love. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, sharing and caring. Yes. Okay. And I'm into it. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. I'll call you up next you time go. I'm having my self analysis. Yes. Because um, Lord knows if- you have to listen to mine. <laughs> <laughs> yours is more interesting oh, um one of our brainiacs kara mcsweeney the mm-hmm. uh zookeeper yes. she sent an article about um a f- type of fish you know those ones that are super super deep in like the midnight zone that yes um, are almost bioluminescent or whatever yes. they call it and she just sent it to me and i hadn't read it yet and i was just like oh fuck like this thing looks Oh, no. monstrous you know how sometimes they do with like those teeth and everything absolutely that that's <laughs> like, like proof that aliens could look like 
the alien from the movie Alien. Yeah, nightmare. Because of what the fish, and, and if people are like, that's not what that's they so look like. True. I'm like, have you seen our own ocean? Yeah, right, Sarah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> well, so they, some dude that was getting his PhD did, was doing his dissertation on these fish that you can find down there. And he, you know, they sent down a net and just pulled it up. And one of the fish that they found was called ultra black fish. And we talked about. <laughs> I'm like, color- one of the fish they pulled up was called Steve. And he was late for wherever the <laughs> hell he was supposed to be going. He was furious got about the net. Pulled up by a net. That's messed up. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, you know, back we to the talked fish. before on this show about the color ultra black and how oh, you look yes. at something black and you and think it's And how that artist dark. had the like patent yeah. on the color and then tried to be like, no, yeah. I own this color. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. And it looks so like a void of everything. Right. Because yes. when we look at something that is black as we know it, yeah. w- you know, we think that's as dark as something could be. But mm-hmm. the essence of color Mm -hmm. is how much light is being absorbed or reflected right Mm -hmm. so that's why when you're in a room with no light you can't see shit it's not like the items have changed it's the amount of light that's changed right so these items ability to reflect or hold light yes 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 yes. oh i love so The ultra black fish that they found, when you look at it, it's not like you're looking at a fish. It's like you're looking at a void, as you said. Wow. It's It's the absence of something. It's like a mind fuck, really. I love that. So these guys absorb 99.9% of light. Wow. And anything less than 10% wow. is um, reflected, is considered black. And I think less than 5% is considered ultra. So this is like... Beyond ultra, right? Well, and it makes sense that you would never even know they were down there because how the hell would you be able to see them unless you put them against a background that was a different color? Because if you yeah, just you go down where like, there's no light, you can like shine, you wouldn't be able to see them. Oh. Yeah, so they they said they were like permanent Ooh. silhouettes. Yeah. Wow! That, I don't, it like creeps me out a bit, but right? I love it. it I don't know we why. Because the heebie know so little. And when you see something like that, you're like, oh my God, we don't know anything. We don't so, know a thing about our oceans and I love it. <laughs> they called them like light devouring voids that almost seem to shred the fabric of space and time. And wow. like, so sometimes you get ultra black on birds or spiders or butterflies, but that's on them it's used to contrast the other colors that they have so it it kind of makes them pop and they're just so beautiful but wow. these fish basically become invisible that's so there's cool. something to give you nightmares if you're yeah you know looking that's for something else cool. to be worried about yeah so now that that jerk he can't patent that because that's like a natural existing color <laughs> that's like no you can't do that shit <laughs> i love that he's a jerk well yeah because why did no, he, he was he a jerk it? he was like being a big jerk about it yes I totally remember us not liking him. <laughs> well, because, yeah, because wasn't his quote-unquote art just a black on the floor and people were, like, going to fall yeah. into it? and made, like, something? an old man, like, break a hip or some shit? <laughs> yeah, there was some danger involved. Golly. We're mad about it, even though we yeah, don't remember the definitely details. definitely the patriarchy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I know enough to know that. I know enough to know that. Anyway, oh. I guess people that like animals are excited about this discovery, so good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I was heartened recently to mm-hmm. learn there is a feminist history of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Oh. Which tell is me. fun. Tell the, me, tell you know, me. hit single of Americana. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, apparently there are other verses to the song that we oh. we, we don't know, but... Well, I mean, other people know it, but we just don't sing them at the game. Uh-huh. But it, they're more telling about this song's origin. But apparently there was this dude, and he was in love with this lady named Trixie. And she, I already love it. <laughs> right. And she was a suffragist, total badass bitch, yep. doing her thing. And um, he was on the bus and thinking about her, and he saw a sign about, you know, baseball today, come come watch and he thought you know she would probably be into that so he wrote the song in sort of as her saying it like take me out to the ball game Mm. 
Yeah. And she's um, singing it. Yeah. And they were saying how the fact that nobody really knows the source of the song is evidence of how women's stories are so often oh, forgotten or God. overlooked or yeah. untold. And it's not just women, of course. It's all marginalized peoples. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, also the power of a historian's curiosity to investigate because that person went in trying to find more information about the song and discovered um, that she was the, what do you call that, inspiration for it. And that's cool because who would ever think that a baseball song... well. And I didn't even know the other lyric, the other lyric, the other verses. <clears throat> I know because when I read them um, in the article, I tried to put it to the tune and it didn't work. Oh no! So there's got to like, be a Wait. change up. There's got to be like a. <laughs> yeah, I need to hear a recording of it. Yeah. Because I was like, "What? That doesn't make sense." But what's but she? she what's like, the vibe? What's the? The what, essence is the that essence she's of- like, "I'm doing my own thing. I'm going to the baseball game." Like, which is something that women weren't just doing their own thing and like going wherever the hell they wanted. And so it was like mm-hmm. talking about her independence yeah. and her own hobbies and passions. And it happened to be about sports, which is super cool. And they were like, well, we don't, we'll have none of that. Yeah. Let's she stick was to the, the Cracker first, Jack. She was the first, uh, uh, um, and I'll do it there. I don't even care. Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Maybe Manic <laughs> Trixie dream girl oh, in this case. Oh, look at that. The right? Lover. But we do love okay. her because she's a suffragette badass bitch and all that. It was like a big scandal though because evidently this guy was married to someone else. Oh, well, see, there you go. <laughs> so maybe she wasn't such a feminist after all, but... Um, just a floozy. They no. were just like banging. He's to blame too. Yeah, changed the course of baseball musicology. No. God bless Trixie, even God though she was a little Trixie. slutty. And, she, and her home runs. <laughs> right. He got to third base with her. hey oh um, Were you privy recently to, do you know the, the uh, Susan Orlean, the woman that wrote the library book? Yeah. I actually have that book sitting in front of me. Oh, well, that's crazy. That is crazy. I have it right in front of me. Susan Orlean, the oh library book. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, her book's wonderful. You should all read it. Um, but she's on Twitter and the other day she (laughs) went to her neighbor's house to go see their new baby mare and they stopped in and they're like, Hey, since while you're here, just have some wine. And you know how sometimes that is where you just pop into a friend's house and the next thing you know, you're wasted. Yeah. Well, that's what happened to Susan. And she started like (laughs) tweeting nonstop and it was hilarious. (laughs) Uh, and it was like charming and lovely and, um, you know, all kinds of typos and whatever. And yeah. Twitter went crazy. Everyone was delighting in this woman's sort of fun night. Uh-huh. And um, I was just thinking to myself, why were we so excited by this? And my theory is mm-hmm. that because everyone is so scared to say anything now <laughs> uh-huh. of getting canceled... That everything is so um, scripted or sort of like safe and there's not as much of that spontaneity. And I know that for myself too. I am very careful now about what I'm tweeting, what I'm saying. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But what you lose is sort of those impulsive moments that are just fun. Yeah. Because especially for celebrities like Susan, you know, you don't want to say something and then have everything go to hell. Right. Like especially yeah. when you're drunk. Right. Oh my gosh. I I drunk texted Ren the very first night that I reached out to him and I know, remember I was with and you. And I will I refuse to even look at those messages. I won't even go Shut back up. in them. I have not ever looked at them cuz I was so embarrassed. Wait, was this like Instagram DM? Yeah. You're kidding me. He was like it's not that bad. Oh, my battery's Lower. Did he know that you were tips? I uh, probably, but I did. I pro- I think when I like, I was just sober enough to read back and be like, "And it's yeah. your fault. You took me to a comedy show, and you tra- <laughs> you your friends gave me shots of whiskey to encourage me to text him." So I mean, I thank them <laughs> in the long run. But I I I've really proved on this show that I'm a big old lightweight, or just boozing it up all the time, which is not the case. <laughs> I promise. But I found yeah. every time I've sort of drunk or tipsy posted or text mm-hmm. whenever i look the next day they're fine they're probably it probably is fine but i'm just like mortified at what i like, could have said 
you know. Right. Because I was like, oh, God. I'm glad you did it. Me too. Hello. And he thinks it's adorable, whatever I said, so. And, like, apparently people text her husband and were like, um, I think somebody (laughs) hacked her her account. And he came in the bedroom and he's like, hey, like, are you okay? People think your account's hacked. And she's like, I'm fine. (laughs) And she kept (laughs) doing it. Get it, Susan. Give her credit because this is my thing about, like, People were, because people were texting me. I'm not going to name names because it's people you guys know, but people were texting me worried about being canceled for tweeting and nobody knows what to say. And I'm thinking, if you live your life in a way that's ethical, you don't have to worry because you're not performing. It's just who you you are. are. Right. And I'm sure that's how she felt. Like she's not going to say anything cancelable because she doesn't have those thoughts. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yes, anyway, exactly. this is a non sequitur. I just yeah. found it I interesting. Like now I want to go read it. I know you should. It's so fun. And you know oh what? My I, God. I, I'm in need of a positive and adorable Twitter rant these oh, yeah. days. Yeah, I hear that. You know? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, when you go online now, there it's not that uh, same escape that it used to be. No, it's not. It is. It's the opposite. I, nope. I, right. That's why I choose Family Matters in the morning instead of yeah. Twitter now because I have to so, to survive. Really? Yes. And now every that. single episode we watch, we're always like, oh my God, Lincoln would love this. So, yes. That's yes, what I'm wondering. Would. No, he, it's totally appropriate for him. Is and it Ren really And Ren and I were talking though? that we were, we were, yes, it is mm-hmm. funny. Okay. And it holds up. Yeah, I love it. What about how that one daughter went, kind of lost her yeah, marbles? Yeah, here's the thing. <laughs> don't Google any of them currently. You have to. That's like the rule with all of that. So you can't. Don't do that. Tell me what they're doing. Just. No, it'll ruin it. Sarah. Well, Eddie, not so nice to his girlfriends. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, daughter, you know, had some drug Didn't issues. Didn't she get into porn and stuff? Yep. Yeah. And then um, did, what's that show called that Dr. Drew did that I don't like? Oh, Sober. yeah, Celebrity Rehab. Celebrity whatever. Rehab, yeah. Wait, what about Laura? She's okay though, right? Yeah, she's okay. I think she was diagnosed with cancer though. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, this and is a downer, Sarah. Ra- Thanks for I nothing. know. <laughs> I, told, I was like, I don't want to play this game. God, why do we, why, I hate this. <laughs> I was like, it was so wow. happy. But no, you know who is amazing is Urkel. And he's, a, a, I think, underappreciated actor. Do and you really? Absolutely gifted as yeah. a child actor. For sure. For sure. I mean, Ren and I talk about how, like, we can't, there were some scenes that he did where we didn't even know that, it, you know, he, like, when he comes out at Stefan or Urkel, you know, and yeah. he gets, like, fancy. Urkel. Yeah, and it's so funny. Like, we were both saying that we didn't even know it was the same person. He was so good. We're like that. When you were young. Yeah, that's got to be a different mm-hmm. person, right? He's not like that. And just the, his ability to do the things I he do does and, like- and make us laugh. It's still funny. You'll like it. You will. I know you will. I understand when actors are upset when they're typecast, but it really is a compliment because yeah, you're so amazing. good at your role that yeah. then people can't see you as anything else. Yeah. So, like, stop being so good, people. Oh, do no, you think, I'm like, kidding. he's mad about it? No, I think he's, he's, well, I don't know. I'd have to ask him. <laughs> Maybe we should have Jaleel White on. Yeah. I just really like the show. The end. <laughs> no, I get it. Oh, I wanted to say one more thing before oh, yeah. your battery dies or whatever. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, really, I, it's annoying because it's plugged in. But oh. somehow it's th- taking more energy to do this show for my little iPad. <laughs> you know iPad what? Same. Then right, it's fitting. <laughs> I wanted to update you because I know you already watched it, but I finally got to watch the last dance about the Bull- Chicago Bulls. Oh, yes. Holy sh... I, I just <sighs> can't believe yeah, see? how great it is. Right. And it... The, I love... As we've talked about on the show, I get really passionate about excellence, people that yes. are excellent at what they do, whether they're a janitor or a chef or a basketball player or whatever. I love seeing someone be totally committed and then 
excel like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm, I'm into that. But I, I didn't know that they also had so much coverage of like, you know, like the endorsements and yeah. um, the interpersonal relationships. I'm always fascinated to see how men behave when there are no women around. Ooh, that yes. is interesting. I find so, it so annoying how they joke and tease each other constantly, but that's what they do. So whatever. <laughs> and um, the dynamics- it's basically the the equivalent of the horn, you know, elk like bucking horns. It really is. It is that. So we got to let them do that. <laughs> we gotta let him do it. Yeah, <laughs> and then just like the business all of, of all of it, and then how personal it can become. I don't know. It yes. was fantastic oh, storytelling. I just love hearing you love this. Mm-hmm. I yes. love a good storytelling that doesn't exploit people. Yes. I love hearing their backstories, and especially Scotty Pippen, how much he overcame. Right, and he's adorable. I want to well, be his he? next yes. wife. <laughs> I mean, he is so sweet and cute and i just want to kiss him mm-hmm. the end that's really cute. <laughs> the end that's but so you guys cute. should watch it oh, even if you don't it. like basketball or sports yeah you'll love it because it's about humans right. it's about people and business and um excellence and that's fun to watch yeah now it's now that's why like everybody's like you know, Russian are already, they're gone. Don't worry. All of the, or I should say, I'm sorry, all of the jerseys for the, like, uh, you know, the bulls and everything. People are like, oh, I want a Michael Jordan jersey. I want one because like. Oh, really? Like it's now a, a coming back again? Well, like people, yeah. I've heard people who have watched the yeah, documentary are like, I could well, see that. well, now I want a Michael Jordan jersey. Yeah, because it makes you really f- understand. I, I prefer... I would rather do it this way where it's all over and now I can have it synthesized and, and unpacked and yeah. described with all the context and stuff Did instead it cha- of just following it at the time. Yeah. Did it change how you view team sports at all and like the, the kind of Not like- team uh, sports, but the, um, the business of it oh, and okay, how cool. much is involved and how the friggin', um, what do they call that where it's like the Bulls organization, they call it. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The organization, like the general manager and all those people yes. that are like total losers, but like oh my really want to be that athletes. crazy story? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then how that. that dynamic changes the actual sports element. Yeah. yeah. Who would, I wouldn't know that because I'm not involved in sports. And so that It's was high drama. It is. Because it's people. Yeah. Because you just think, oh, they're playing a game and that's it. And whoever wins, wins. But it, right. there's a lot of dynamics that influence the outcome beyond yeah. the talent of the players. Which is why whenever I played fantasy football, I always looked more into their relationships. That they, I said, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to pick anybody who has a, 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 you know confrontational or bad relationships with his girlfriends and wives because he's probably not going to be a consistent player yeah. and he's too emotional and he's going through oh that one's going through a divorce nope definitely not picking him i <laughs> just look yeah. at so I'm like that's how they, i determine how they're gonna what play do you, what do you think about dennis rodman oh he's a fun character to watch i think he's 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 complicated yeah mm-hmm. and i i think I think that maybe the development of that identity, it was like his way to find like comfort and also strength and also like kind of stand out. And but yeah, it's complicated, but it sure is interesting. Because people think of him as a loose cannon, but in yeah. some ways he's so disciplined and yeah. so um, strategic and smart. I was, I yes. was into that. I think it's more too. like that. You know how we when we talked to Cyrus and we did that interview with mm-hmm. him the 15 minutes mm-hmm. of blame he talked about how his look is very um what's the word i'm looking for it's like, like by design by design intentional mm-hmm. it's very mm-hmm. intentional and it's not like you know it's thought out and it's purposeful and so i feel like dennis rodman is the same with that like i think the things that he did for attention and for um you know to create his persona yeah were more intentional than i think people think yeah because it was a spectacle but on the court he did his job and it was very impressive 
And doesn't Carmen Electra say that she really liked him? That, like, he's a great guy? Yeah. Yeah, so I really like, because I just listened to the girlfriends. Yeah, she, she was. And ex-wives, really, yeah. She They're seemed like, oh, yeah, like, he's great. Yeah, nothing bad to say about him. Right, and Michael Jackson, or Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan was mad because he was late. Michael Jordan. Yeah, I like seeing how he holds people accountable yes. and has expectations and makes them very clear. Mm-hmm. But then he follows those things too. Because mm-hmm. I feel like that's how I am, where yes. I'm like, I have very high standards, but I also apply them to myself. Yes. Um, but yeah. well, good. anyway, Scotty's well, good. adorable and yes. I want to kiss his eyelids. The end. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cute. I love it. Well, I'm glad you uh, like it, Sus. Anywho, don't forget to leave us a five-star review and uh, subscribe. We love you guys. Yeah, man. Bye. Bye.